it seems like flash flooding is increasing. Part of that is because we're seeing more short duration intense storm events, which are attributed to climate change. And we expect this to continue and potentially increase. As engineers, we depend on you know, data to inform decisions and designs. And the historic data is changing. Flashlighting is not seen as a really scary risk like tornadoes because it's just water. But flooding can be significant and can cause um, severe damages. It's important to have a game plan for what you would do if you were subjected to flash flooding. And some of those things include having a go bag or a bag of supplies for you and your family, having important documents available and in a watertight container, such as a Ziploc bag, and knowing where you could go. An evacuation route, family or friends you could stay with that might not be in a similar hazard zone so that you can reduce the need for resources to help you and they can be prioritized for others. Also be aware of where to get alerts. Some of the flash flooding that we have seen in recent years has happened at night when people were asleep in their homes um, and not paying attention to warnings. If you do receive a flash flood warning, you want to move to higher ground. You don't want to try to drive through flooded um, areas, especially if the water is moving quickly. Within six inches of water, it can affect your vehicle. Two feet of water moving quickly can carry your vehicle a good distance. So there are some things to help mitigate flash flooding in your community. And while it may not significantly change the situation on your property, as an individual, you can contribute to the broader good of the community and help mitigate the potential for flash flooding a little bit. So whether you're in an urban or a rural environment, there are a few things you can do. Those things could be putting in a rain garden. I personally have one on my property and I'm not near a waterway, but it helps absorb and retain some of the precipitation when it falls. Reducing the amount of impervious area on your property. So instead of having a concrete or asphalt paved driveway, you could have pavers, you can have gravel, you could even have grass. Um, having more trees and greenery on your property can lead to more absorption of the precipitation. It also helps provide cooling effects, keeps the soil cooler and possibly less dry. So it can more readily absorb the precipitation. If you're in an urban environment and you don't have much land or space, using rain barrels to collect some of that first part of the precipitation and then allow it to be released into the natural system later is another means to help mitigate flooding in your community. As we look to the future, what we really need to be doing is being proactive. As we build infrastructure, redevelop areas, we need to think about flash flooding as something that's going to keep happening. Short duration intense storm events are not going away, unfortunately, based on the data that we see. One of the best things that we can do is start thinking about where are those most vulnerable areas? Thinking about vulnerable populations, areas that are flooding more regularly, that may need some infrastructure upgrades, culvert upgrades, those things. And when we do have a disaster and we are rebuilding, we could be rebuilding to a higher capacity than what was previously there. Personally, I think education and outreach is one of the easiest ways to help mitigate impacts of flash flooding. These flash flooding events do not have to be disasters. If people are prepared, not in harm's way, and infrastructure is hardened. So we have to think smarter about how to minimize the impacts.